An annual income of 34816 can be expected from this property nestled near the picturesque Whittlingham Country Park right near the River Yare. It's only crying out for one thing. It is saying I am an Airbnb short-term let for a property investor who's able to operate it within that area. We are in the room. The bidding has started at 165000 Let's get into this deal. Welcome to another episode of Auction Watch. I'm your host, Michael Cosmos. This is the show where we bring you exciting properties from the world of property auctions. Today, we're looking at another fascinating property which is listed in the OSOP August 2023 listings. It's lot number 198, a semi-detached bungalow in the heart of Norwich. Let's get into this deal. Listed at a guide price of 175,000, this property has two bedrooms, a former bathroom and kitchen. I say former because it comes in shell condition, ready for you to put a personal touch on it. Let's delve into this deal and look at more details. But before we go inside the property, I want us to focus on the location because this deal is all about location, location, location. Let's talk about the dream location. This property is nestled near the picturesque Whittlingham Country Park, right near the River Yare. This is a place which is an oasis for wildlife and leisure. Folks, this park is a paradise for outdoor enthusiasts offering water sports, walking trails, and even a solar boat trip. You can explore the whole Broads and Whittlingham Little Broad, both stunning lake which are right close to the property itself. It's only crying out for one thing. It is saying I am an Airbnb short-term let for a property investor who is able to operate it within that area. As I've always said on this show, we start with the end in mind. Now that we know what we can do with this property, let's look into the internals and see what we can make of it. Okay, so this is a standard bungalow. Uh, it has a hallway which has all the rooms leading off it. Let's start off with the living room and look at the condition of it. Some of the walls are looking like they are not in such a bad condition, but having said that, there is a lot of trunking right across the house, as you can see, which means that in terms of your wiring, you might have to rewire the whole entire property because some of these trunking might fall outside of the safety regulation in terms of passing the test for your safety electrical checks. Looking at the boiler, it might look like you also need to install an entire heating system. This is a total uh, refurb job. There is no kitchen, there is no bathroom. It seems like someone has started the job and they got caught halfway through it and were not able to finish it. So it's looking for an investor who's able to come in and put their own stamp on this property. I think it's a little uh, beautiful chocolate box that you can make out of this if you can put the right personal touches and aesthetics to it in terms of making it a short-term let that is able to cater to people who want to come down and enjoy the broads. But furthermore, let's go into the other rooms. I think it's a decent sized kitchen uh, for someone who's staying for short term as well as the bathroom. It's not big, but it is functional. It will do the job while you're staying for two or three days in a holiday setting. Let's look at the garden. The garden has some overgrowth, but you can see there are some mature trees and plants that could help create another small little oasis at the back of this garden. It's about making it Instagrammable when you're looking at Airbnb. And I think with the right gardener, you can create something beautiful that will draw people to want to book this property and also enjoy the garden during the summertime. Let's take a quick walk on this particular street to get a feel of the neighborhood we are going to invest in. As you can notice, all the roofs are quite similar. What I'm looking for are any properties on this road that have had 
loft extensions that I can see visible from the front. But there is no president that I can see on this particular road. That might mean that it might be difficult to get planning permission for a loft extension, but it's something that you can look into if you're looking to do a loft extension and potentially maybe you could do a back extension should you want to create more space. But looking at this property as a short term alert, it might be sufficient in terms of size to be able to utilize it as it is. But maybe if you're looking to flip it, uh, you might want to extend it into the loft as well as into the back. Uh, though the garden might not lend itself to too much extension because it has quite a small space. Now that we have established our end goal with this property of turning it into a short-term holiday let investment, let's consider some critical tips when we are going down this path of investment. The first tip I would provide is location, location, location. We have already identified that this property is in a great location, but I would also add to the fact that you do not just have to look at holiday hotspots when you're looking at short-term lets. You could consider other areas in other markets such as contractors is the property position in a place where it is serving maybe a large hospital or a, a district where there is sufficient construction work happening you will find individuals who are coming into the city or into that particular area who are seeking for short-term let but while we are talking about also location consider are you able to service the property Unlike any other property investment, when you go into holiday lets, it is an operational business that needs a day-to-day -day input on the ground. So you have to consider things such as, can you service the property with cleaners? Are you able to get bed linen cleaned and delivered to the property? Do you have maintenance workers who can easily access the property and repair it at a decent price? If the property is far remotely located, you now have to factor that in into your calculations because your cleaning and your bedding and your deliveries will be more expensive because the location is remote and it might well be difficult to replace your service providers should they not be performing just mainly because you do not have a great pool of other service providers to take as alternatives. Tip number two, research is critical when you're looking at a Airbnb or short-term let property as to how it will perform. Uh, for this, I'll recommend using platforms such as AirDNA. The platform allows you to get a good sense of what the demand is like in the area. By logging into the platform and signing up, you're able to find out what is the average daily rate for that particular area as well as occupancy and other data such as uh, revenue per year, per month, and how other properties in the area are performing. By utilizing platforms like this, you can use comparables to gauge how much demand you're likely to gain as well as what is your competition currently uh, in the area as well as what are their performance, their annual results, so that you can gauge what type of market you're getting into. Research that and use the appropriate levers to put all the relevant contingencies in your planning. Tip number three, understand the regulations within that local area. It is critical for you to understand the regulations that are required for a short term led by the local authority that you're operating in. Different authorities have different requirements. So it is critical for you to understand those so that that way you have a solid investment for the long term, though you are running a short term rental business. Ultimately, you're spending substantial amount of money to set up this investment. Some areas you're only allowed to run it as an Airbnb for 90 days per year. So if you are going to do that and you have the restrictions of 90 days while you had calculated for running it all year round, you will have a significant shortfall and your investment might not be 
viable. So it is critical to understand what is the regulations, but also keep an eye on new developments because there are bills and white papers which are going through government and local authorities. They are constantly revising what they are doing within different local authority areas as to managing the, the, the rise in development in short-term lapse within their areas. Let's dive into the numbers and look at what we can afford to put a budget for for this particular property at a guide price of 175,000 we will start with the end in mind let's research how much we could uplift the value through refurbishment and look at the ceiling within the area looking at past sold prices in the current market condition you could put an end value of 240,000 pounds for this two bedroom bungalow within Norwich, within this specific area. With 240,000 as our end value, we work backwards to calculate how much we can actually bid for as our maximum offer price for this property. We can calculate uh, using this spreadsheet. I would encourage you to download it. It's available for download in the description for free so that you can also use it to calculate your deals uh, looking at a budget of 45,000 for refurbishment this will also include some finishing for this property with closing fees at 10,000 pounds we have a total spend of 230,000 pounds. Let's look at the revenue for this property using the data from Air DNA. We can expect to earn an income of 136 pounds per night with an occupancy of 70%. An annual income of 34,816 can be expected from this property, offering a yield of 15%. All facts considered, we will be looking at a maximum bidding price of £180,000 for this property. Let's go into the auction and see how we fare with that. Before you go into the auction room, make sure you have your finance sorted. At City Estate Partners, we offer specialized auction finance solutions tailored to your needs. With our expertise and experience, you can bid with confidence and seize the opportunities in today's fast-paced property market. Get in touch with us today at www.citystatepartners.com and explore your financial options for successful bidding. We are in the room. The bidding has started at 165,000. With two hours left on the clock, we would expect that it might stay in this position for quite a while as all the bidders will stampede with their bids towards the end of the auction. That is the nature of this type of online auction whereby there is no hammer going down imminently, but the bidding is done over a number of hours. So let's come back as we look at the clock running down on this particular lot and see how it finishes up in this option. We have under one minute left of bidding for this lot and we are at 167,000 pounds. It seems like this lot might go well below the guide price and someone is walking away with the bargain today. But it seems like there is some movement uh, there is an extra bid that has come in. We are now at 168, 170. Another bid has come in. It seems like there is now movement. We have 25 seconds left. We have 171 on the bidding counter. 20 seconds left on the counter and we are at 174, 175. It seems like it is going to go. It's going for three two one it is close on 175,000 well within the range of our budget there you go folks this particular lot closed right on the guide price 175,000 pound someone walked away with the deal right on the guide price just to close up on this particular lot it's important to remember everyone at auction is analyzing the deal in a different way so if you ever go at auction and you see some people are bidding way above what you had budgeted for you have to consider maybe they're using a different strategy by utilizing different strategies people will come up with different end values or what they are willing to pay for it we were looking 
looking at a short-term rental for this particular property, someone else might be looking for a standard let and their return on investment will be different from ours, meaning that what they are willing to pay for is also different from what we're willing to pay for. So remember that as you go into auction, your strategy will determine what you're willing to pay for, likewise to your competition. By utilizing the most optimal strategy for each property, it makes you more competitive at auction and allows you to win those deals above all the other investors. I'm your host, Michael Cosmos. Like and subscribe to this channel for more tips on Auction Watch. I'll see you next time.